Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Today I have a tutorial on how I created this wrap skirt. So I thought it was really fun and cute for the summer and I decided that I just wanted to film it for you guys. So if you guys are interested in seeing how I make this quick and easy wrap skirt, then just keep on watching. So the first thing that you're going to need is your skirt block or your skirt pattern. I'm going to be tracing it. And I'm not tracing the full length because I want it to be a mini skirt. If you want it longer, then you trace it to whatever desired length you want. And my skirt is about 16 inches in length. And I also want it noted that I'm tracing off the back pattern here. So this pattern you only need to trace on the fold and you will cut one piece of that. So the next pattern that I'm tracing off is my front skirt. And because it's gonna be a wrap skirt and it's gonna have an asymmetrical kind of detail, you have to trace out the full skirt front so this can't be traced out on the fold you want to trace both halves of the skirt as you see that I'm doing here and then I also just marked my hip notch so you also want to make sure you do that so that you're able to match it up to the back and I'm gonna measure 16 inches down and that's where I'm gonna stop at the hem Again, you can do this to whatever desired length you want. If you want it longer, then you would trace it out longer. Just tracing it out in my marker so you guys can see clearly what I'm doing. So once you have that all traced out, you want to start to determine where you want your wrap portion to begin. So I was trying to figure out if I would have enough coverage if I went out 3 inches, 2 inches, and I wasn't sure um, how far out I wanted it to go. So as you can see, I'm here. I'm trying to think of where I want my coverage to be. So if you want more wrap um, and you don't want as much skin showing, then you would want to stick to bringing it all the way to the side seam. I'm measuring out. I said I put three inches on the piece of paper, but I actually measured about an inch or two inches away from the side seam and now I'm just connecting from the waist to the hem on a diagonal line. So I try my best. I don't like to include too much measurements because I feel like it depends on what you're comfortable with when it comes on to those measurements. So if you're a person that likes more coverage, you don't want to show as much skin, I would suggest starting that line directly from the side seam. But if you want to show a little skin, then I would say play around with it and see how comfortable you are. But I went out about two inches from the side seam. Now I'm just tracing the front portion of the skirt so that I can create my new piece. As you can see, I've included all the darts. If you're using a knit fabric, I don't think that you really need too many darts with that because it will form to the form to around your body, so you wouldn't need the darts. But if you're using a woven fabric like me, then you should include darts. And that's my new pattern piece. So now I'm tracing off the other side of the skirt. And you want to make sure that it's the side that you dis you you cut from. So wherever you started your diagonal line, that's the side that you want to create um, the side front piece for. And then again, you can see I'm kind of playing around trying to figure out how I want this. If I want to include the dart or if I don't want to include the dart. And I'm making the decision to eliminate the dart. And I'm just connecting with a diagonal line from the waistline up until the hem and 
and then you want to also make sure everything is matching that piece should also be 16 inches down you want to ensure that you have a notch for your hip so that everything is matching up once you go to sew it and then I cut one piece of that and that's my side front and again for the front you're just going to cut one piece and then the back you're going to cut on the fold and you're going to cut one piece so you should have three pieces in total I'm actually showing you a visual of how it looks when you overlap it it's a little short on my paper pattern but I obviously would make sure they match up um, on my regular real pattern that I'm going to do after this Another thing that you want to make sure that you cut out or you trace out is your wrap, your ties for your wrap. Um, again, this is up to you how thick you want them to be. I'm making mine's about two inches. And then the length obviously is going to be dependent on how big your waist is and how much you want to tie around. And then these are all my pieces and then I'm going to obviously go back and I'm going to create that on full scale pattern. So all of these, these measurements you're going to be translating onto your full scale pattern. You shouldn't even go through this stuff. I'm just doing this because I'm showing you guys. Um, it's easier for me to show you guys what I'm doing in these small pattern pieces. And then you also want to make sure that you go around and you include seam allowances. So you want to include half an inch seam allowance, seam allowance around all your pattern pieces. So I'm now taking my pieces to the serger and I'm just going to serge my side seams. Once I finish surging all my side seams, I'm just going to sew my darts. This might not be relevant de depending on what fabric you're using, but if you're using a fabric that requires darts, then you should sew down your darts at this point. So now that my darts are sewn, I'm just showing you guys how I lay my pieces and pin them in place. Once I finish pinning that in place, I'm going to just sew at a half an inch seam allowance when I bring it to the machine. So this step is very important and I forgot to mention it before but you want to leave a little opening so that one of the strings can go through on one of the sides. It doesn't matter which side you want to use, whatever you're comfortable with, that's where you're going to leave a small opening so that you can push the string through.
So now I'm just going to show you guys how the skirt's starting to look. I'm just showing you on the dress form. I'm really happy with how it is turning out. And before you're going to attach your waistband, you have to hem the front of the skirt. And once you hem, now I'm just attaching my two strings together. My material wasn't long enough, so you could actually cut it in one piece. But my material is long, so I had to connect my strings. And then I'm showing you how I pin them down to the waistline of the skirt. And once that's pinned, you're going to bring it to your machine and you're going to sew it down at a half an inch seam allowance. And guys, please excuse my dry hands. I'm so sorry. So once you're finished stitching that down, you're going to take it to the iron and iron it down. I think I'm going to be lazy and not do that. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. But I would, at that point, I would definitely take it to the machine and iron it. But I'm being lazy, so I'm just going to pin it in place. Um, and then you're just going to see how it kind of comes together once you start turning it over. And you have a really, really clean finish and waistband once this is done. So once everything is pinned into place, now I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch over the strings as well as the waist and I'm just going to do it until I, I reach the end of the, the ties around the skirt.
And there you go. So you're just going to top stitch over. They call it a stitch in the ditch. So that's what I'm just doing. I'm stitching in the ditch. And... So once you finish stitching down your strings, you want to go ahead and hem the bottom of the skirt and then you're pretty much finished. There's nothing left to do but to style it and wear it how you please. Um, I think this is a really easy tutorial and I hope that you guys learned something from this tutorial. Make sure you guys comment, like, and subscribe and I will definitely see you in my next video. Bye guys.